Here's another example of an exponential function. So I know this is exponential because it has an x for an exponent. And I also know that because this is a number greater than 1, it's going to be growth. It has a growth factor of 2. So I'm going to make a table of values to see what happens here. I always like to start with the number of 0 because I know that 2 to the 0 is 1, and then I'm going to make that negative. So 0, negative 1 is on my graph. And then I'm going to try a couple numbers bigger than 0 and a couple numbers smaller than 0. So here I would have 2 to the first negative, which would be negative 2. And then I'm going to try 2. So I'd have negative 2 squared, which would be negative 4. On the other side, when I have negative 2 to the negative 1 power, that would be negative 1 half. And then negative 2 to the negative 2 power, this is 1 fourth, so it would be negative 1 fourth. So what happens again on this one? is we have a graph that's approaching 0 but not touching. So our asymptote is going to be y equals 0 and it's horizontal. And the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range goes from 0, or excuse me, negative infinity to 0 because it start, all the y values start down here and go up to 0. The y-intercept is where the x value is 0 and y is negative 1. So the behavior on the left side, as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching 0. On the other side, as x approaches infinity, y approaches negative infinity. So what happened on this one is usually a growth goes like this, but because the negative was in front, it reflected across the x-axis. It's still a growth, even though it looks like it's going down. It's decreasing across the domain, but it's still a growth because the factor is a positive 2. It's just a reflected positive 2. Let's look at the next one. So what's happening this time, uh, I'm going to start with 0 for x. So I have 2 to the 0, which is 1, plus 5, which is 6. If I put in 1 for x, I have 2 to the first, which is 2, add 5, which is 7. If I put 2 in for x, I have 2 squared plus 5, which is 9. On the other side, if I put negative 1 in, I have 2 to the negative 1 power, add 5. 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half, add 5 is 5.5. If I do 2 to the negative 2 add 5, this becomes 1 over 2 squared plus 5, which is 1 fourth plus 5, or 5.25. So what happens is I get 5.25, 5.125, and this just keeps getting closer and closer to the number 5. So what I'd like for you to see on this one is this plus 5 is going to shift our graph up 5 units. So instead of having an asymptote at 0, the asymptote moves up here to y equals 5. And again, this one's exponential. And it's a growth because of the 2 right here. The domain is still negative infinity to infinity. But because the asymptote is up at 5, our, do our range is going to change and go from 5 to infinity. The y-intercept also changes. It's at 0, 6. And the end behavior on the left side, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 5. And as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. Some of you may want to use your graphing calculator or Desmos, and I'm going to show you how to use Desmos in a separate video in just a moment. 
But if you want to plug this into your graphing calculator, you can go to y equals and type in the equation 2 to the x plus 5 and hit graph. You can see what happens here. The graph moves up 5 units. You can also see on the table that once I hit, look at the y at negative 7. It's 5.0078. The y value just keeps getting smaller until eventually the table just says 5. Once your y value starts saying the same number, you know you found your asymptote. Okay, let's do one more here. This one's going to be a little different because look at my exponent. This time the 5 is being added to the exponent. I think I'll use the graphing calculator to make my table. And I want to show you. So we have a negative 2 to the x plus 5. And I'll get rid of these other things here. So we know that by adding a number with the 5 at the top, it should move this graph to the left. Whoops. Let's clear this out and start again. Negative 2 to the x plus 5. So the negative on the 2 reflected it, but the plus 5 moved this to the left. So I'm going to get my table from here. Now notice on our table we usually started with 0 because we know what 2 to the 0 power is. But this time I don't want to use 0 because if I put 0 in for x I'm going to end up getting negative 2 to the fifth power. And 2 to the fifth power is 32 and that's not going to be on my graph. So I want to look someplace different. Typically I want this to be 0. But the reason I want it to be zero is because it's easy to figure in my head. It makes it on the graph. So this time instead of putting zero for x, I want to put x to be some number that makes this zero. So I'm going to choose negative five because negative five plus five will make the whole thing be zero. So when I go look at my graph, I really want to look at negative five. Next to negative five is negative one. And then I want to pick two numbers bigger and two numbers smaller for graphing. So negative 6 is negative 0.5 and 7 is negative 0.25. Negative 4 is negative 2 and negative 4. So when I graph these numbers, these numbers will actually be on the graph. But normally our y intercept is here, but this time it's been shifted left. So this one again is an exponential growth. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range negative infinity to zero. The y intercept this time is where x is zero. So I'm going to go back and look at my graph. If I put 0 in, I get negative 32 because 2 to the 5th is 32. So I can't see it on my graph this time. The behavior on the left side as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 0. And on the right side as x approaches infinity, y approaches negative infinity.